Hi everyone, my name is Ursi and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the most intimidating books I own. Let's get to it. Alright, so I was taking a look at my bookshelf and I saw these books staring down at me, accusing me of being a security cat, being a wimp, and I must admit, I am. <laughs> <laughs> they were mocking me, okay? These books were telling me I wasn't smart enough to read it. I wasn't brave enough to read them. I wasn't bold enough to read them. I'm gonna call them out today. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. <laughs> so I've got five books that intimidate me, but I will get to them soon. Calling myself out in this video is gonna help motivate me, which is odd enough, right? It's gonna motivate me to help pick these up sooner rather than later and Maybe I can stop ignoring them, right? Because they're so massive and intimidating. So <laughs> maybe I'm not the only one that feels this kind of way towards some books on their shelves. I just thought it's funny because it's like you get these books and you have, you have every intention of reading them and then it's staring at you to get to them and you're just like, not today, bro. You know? <laughs> so let's just talk about the books. The first book I want to talk about that is very intimidating to me for some reason. It's Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. This is the first book to the Star Trilogy and I first heard about it from Russell's channel on Ink and Paper blog. Now, side note, if you're not watching Russell, you need to go watch Russell because he's got a really great channel. He's always putting out really great recommendations for everyone to go watch or for everyone to go read. You should definitely check him out. But anyway, so he talked about this book on his channel. It motivated me to add it to my TBR list when I was in New York uh, with my husband. We were visiting family and I think we went to Comic-Con. I think when I got this book was when we went to Comic-Con. But anyways, we went to the Strand Bookstore and I managed to pick this book up while I was there. So really fond memories of getting the book, but I still haven't read it. <laughs> So that was Comic-Con of 2019. So it was like October 2019 was when I picked up this book. Now this book is supposed to follow this guy. He's a tracker and he's on a, he was hired to go uh, seek this boy that was kidnapped. Along the way, he's, he's realizing that it's a lot more to the story than what he was initially hired for. There's magic, African folklore infused within the story too. So these are all things that I love about stories. But for some reason, I just, I, I just haven't opened this book yet. I think because a lot of people were saying that, Russell included, was saying that this book was kind of dense and some people were giving it, you know, like middle reviews because of that. So I hope that I enjoy this because obviously you want to enjoy the books that you get, right? I hope that I enjoy this and I want to support this author and hopefully mentioning it in this video will help me actually pick it up sooner rather than later. So that's the same with all the books in this video. I hope I don't repeat myself too much. But anyways, that's Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. Oh, and this is a fantasy series. I don't know if I said that, but yeah, there it is. The next two books are by the same author. They both intimidate me. I still have not read either of them, but they both feature themes that are very, very interesting to me. Just, I think it's the size of them uh, that's sort of intimidating to me, but it's uh, Fyodor's Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment and uh, the brothers Karamazov, Karamazov, I'm not sure. Yeah, both of these books just really intimidate me. I mean, they're monster books. <laughs> So I'm not intimidated by either of these because they're classics. If anything, that was part of the reason why I purchased them. I read a lot of classics for my humanities courses over the years, but oddly enough, I was never, ever, ever assigned to read either of these. I feel like Crime and Punishment, if anything, that's the one that gets assigned more often than I ever see of this one, The Brothers Karamazov. But I've never been assigned to read either of them. Perhaps it's due to the size. It's it's one of those things like when I'm, I'm taking my university courses, they tend to focus on like one book a week and being this, the massive size of this, I'm pretty sure they don't want to kind of overwhelm the students or at least in my courses. Then again, we were reading Plato's Republic. It, that's not a big book either, but I feel like that one's harder to get through because of the age and certain translations. But anyways, I'm digressing. I haven't read these. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> because they're massive, okay? So Crime and Punishment features a young man 
who is poor but very talented or at least very smart and he decides that he is going to commit the perfect crime he's just way too intelligent he feels he is intellectually superior to the laws of the land and he is able to commit this perfect crime but i believe the guilt and you know the investigation is catching up with him so that's pretty much the theme of this story so i, I believe it's going to be touching on morality your consciousness and all those kind of themes right i'm, I'm pretty sure there's more but um, I've never read it. So that's Crime and Punishment. And then the brother Skarmasov is supposed to follow these three brothers who have to come together after the brutal murder of their father. It's very famous for having these very deep themes in terms of the, exist the existence of God, the root of evil, um, the nature of freedom, you know, these really big uh, philosophical topics that is very interesting for me to read about but i haven't read it yet so the three brothers are very different from one another um i think that's one of the prevailing themes without this throughout this book i don't know if they're each going to represent some sort of theme or idea but um it is very interesting to me but i've had this book on my shelf for a few years now and i just keep overlooking and ignoring it because i don't know i'm just scared <laughs> It's just intimidating to me. Let me know if you've read any of these so far and if I'm just being a big old chicken. So <laughs> so that's the two books from Dostoevsky. Before I mention the next book, I have a confession to make. Okay, despite reading lots of fantasy, I have yet to read this book series. Don't judge me too hard. <laughs> the next book that is very intimidating to me is... The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Now, I think it has to do with this edition that I bought. So I saw this edition in the bookstore and I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And I've been waiting to buy a really nice edition of these books. And when I saw this one, I thought that was it. There it is. I love it. I want this. And I wound up trading in a bunch of books and using the credit to get this one. But I actually did myself a disservice because now I see this as one big book. Now I know it's three books, but I it looks like one big book like this because it's in a bind up. And now I'm just so intimidated and I still have not picked this up. <laughs> I mean, it's the story of Frodo in Middle Earth on his journey to destroy the one ring that was created to destroy everything, right? Or rule them all or something. So it, it's been a while since I've watched the movies too. So ex excuse my bad <laughs> synopsis of this book. It's still one that I do want to get to, especially knowing that a lot of more modern fantasy now is heavily influenced by The Lord of the Rings, and I just need to get to it. I feel like if you want to be a well-rounded fantasy reader, you have this is sort of like a signed reading, isn't it? So, like I have it, but it's just a monster of a book, but at least the three together, right? But anyways, that's The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I didn't have these ranked, but as I'm looking at this last book, I'm like, yo, this is the most intimidating book on my bookshelf. And that's Ulysses by James Joyce. I bought this edition about maybe two years ago now, I think. I have been wanting to get this book since I was like 18. Um, I used to work at this restaurant and there was this one guest that he was like a regular that would come in all the time. And because I was a hostess, I would just kind of hang out in the front. I would talk to him because he'd be at the bar and stuff. He was like an older guy and, and he was just like a like interesting to talk to. And he would come in with different books and then I talked to him about the books that he was reading. And one day he came in with Ulysses. We talked about it for a little bit and I just found it to be so interesting. I've been wanting to read this for since then. But I've always been really scared to read it then because he warned me then that it was not the easiest book to get through. Despite that challenge, um, it always still made me want to read this book. When I bought it a couple years ago, I told myself I'm going to read it soon and I still have not picked it up. So this is supposed to be loosely based on like the Odyssey, but instead of the journey of the Odyssey, which is supposed to be like 20 years uh, throughout the course of the book. The events in this book take place in one day in 1904 Ireland. 
the different chapters in here are supposed to follow different writing styles. So one, I believe one's like a stream of consciousness. Another one is written like a play. Another one's written like a symphony. Like there's just different writing styles in here. And I feel like maybe that's what it is that's intimidating me about this book is, you know, when you start a book and you have to like get acquainted with the language of said book. Let's say you're reading a Stephen King book and you're you're used to his language. Then you jump out and you read like a romance or something. It's so different and it takes you like a minute to kind of get with the writing of it. To have to do that with every chapter of this book, I feel like that's the challenge in this book. But you know what I'm gonna do? Here's, here's the plan. When I do actually get to this book, I'm just gonna read it straight through. I'm not going to annotate. I'm not going to try to dwell over things. I'm just going to read it. On my reread, then I'm going to take my time, being that I already have like this background knowledge from that read through, that will probably help me better digest the contents of this book because this is supposed to be considered like a masterpiece of like literary writing. I want to know why. So <laughs> So anyways, but it's still, but it still intimidates me just because of the sheer size of it, the writing style, we'll just see how it goes. So anyways, that's Ulysses by James Joyce, the most intimidating book on my bookshelf. Let me see if I can hold everything up. I'm going to look like an idiot right now. But this is my list of the most intimidating books on my bookshelf. I'm going to put this down because it's very heavy. Please tell me, have you read any of these books? Am I just overthinking it? Should I just dive into these books? What did you think of these books if you read them? And if you haven't read them, do you plan on reading them? Do they intimidate you too? Like, I can't be the only one that feels that way <laughs> when it comes to these books. But let me know. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.